I'm Shu Han. I'm associate professor in biomedical engineering. My lab is interested in neural network mechanisms of disease and, and also how brain stimulation could alter these uh, neural networks. I'll give you one concrete example. Currently, we are working on how deep brain stimulation is altering neural network uh, dynamics uh, in the context of Parkinson's disease. Now, to study neural network, we have a, a lot of work ongoing to develop novel neural technologies so we can monitor and control uh, these different neurons within a neural network. Uh, for example, over a decade ago, oops, I also turn it off. Um, is it this? Okay. Over a decade ago, uh, we developed uh, optogenetic techniques, which we use rhodopsins that we found in archaebacterium. And then those are light sensitive proteins, and we put them on neurons. Now we can control individual neurons of specific cell types uh, with the light, either activate or silence them. So that's over a decade ago. We have done a lot of work on controlling. What have we been doing since then? So over the past uh, few years, we have been developing techniques to monitor neurons, imaging neurons, and also to uh, develop techniques uh, to infect or do gene therapy to target specific cell types. So I'm going to give you two recent examples. One is the most recent development of voltage imaging techniques uh, that was just published uh, recently a few months ago. And another one is to use a novel gene therapy viral vector design to label specific cell types in uh, many species. Um, so first, uh, imaging voltage is really hard. People have been doing uh, calcium imaging. Uh, that's much easier. But voltage imaging, uh, because the sensor needs to be on the cell membrane, so that's hard through some large-scale uh, screening uh, effort in collaboration with Ed Boyden's group at MIT, we have found a soma archon. We named this molecule soma archon. This is a hippocampal neuron expressing this particular uh, voltage sensor on the plasma membrane. Uh, when we do image, here are individual action potential imaged through the fluorescent changes of this particular molecule. So if we zoom in, this is the time scale. You can see individual action potentials. And these matched very well with the electrophysiology recordings. And if we look at the signal to noise uh, ratio of each of these action potentials relative to the subthreshold uh, membrane dynamics, we can achieve 15 or higher uh, uh, SNRs. And in addition, we can monitor these subthreshold dynamic changes. And this is uh, uh, in, a, in a awake behaving animal. So this is for the first time that we can actually see uh, voltages in a behaving mice. And here I have a video. I think it, does it play? Um, I don't know if I do next. All right, so you can see on the top, uh, this is not much processing uh, of this raw video. We did motion correction to uh, correct any potential uh, you know, uh, micro motion. And you see the flashes of the fluorescence at the bottom of the fluorescent intensity corresponding to the particular time. And this uh, image was collected at about kilohertz. We are, I'm, I'm slowly, uh, I'm playing it uh, at a video rate so we can appreciate this dynamic changes. All right, so now, uh, this technique has been recently published. And now, how do we inf um, introduce these molecules to study specific cell types? This is just one example. We, using, uh, we are using synthetic biology approaches in using microarrays to target specific cells. In this particular case, long story short, we were able to use specific microarrays to direct uh, these viral expression to inhibitory neurons specifically. And I'm, my time's up. Uh, but nonetheless, we can now design novel viral vectors to work in potentially non-transgenic uh, species, including uh, human viral gene therapy. Thank you.